Welcome, downtown congregation. We're a little different. Um, it's weird getting to be at Old Brick, but not getting to be with you guys. Um, but something that I definitely say to hospitality, um, our greeters often, is that um, the church is not just a building. And um, so we're just getting to be together in a different way and a different outlet. So um, I'm excited that a lot of you guys have done things online and trying to stay connected, um, community groups getting to still meet via Google Meet or Zoom or whatnot. So, um, but if you have not gotten to reach out um, and are still in town, um, let us know. So um, just email downtown at graceb3.org um, and Steve, Jason, or myself will reach out to you. Um, we're really wanting to be intentional about getting to reach out um, individually to you all as we are just um, not here. Um, and so we see each other a lot on Sundays and are just able to give a hug or a smile. Um, and we still want to do smiling as much as we possibly can and checking in um, verbally and audio and everything, um, even if we can't meet face to face. Um, but we definitely care about each one of you um, during this time. So I just have some quick announcements. Um, and hopefully you've known some of these things as North Liberty and just Grace Community Church as a whole has done a lot with getting out the message of what we need with um, the circumstances we're in with COVID-19. Um, so one is download the Grace B3 app. We say that every week, but um, definitely right now as there are notifications that come up um, and just turn on your notifications. There's not a lot of notifications. It's really just when you need it to know things. Um, so if the live stream is going to be really there or if we're closing down the building um, or just those types of information. So download the app. Um, also, if you're wanting to um, figure out some things to do and just serve our community um, and be the church at large um, during this time, we also have a uh, a website that has a lot of information um, for the corridor, so North Liberty and Iowa City together. So that is graceb3.org backslash action. Um, so again, that's graceb3.org backslash action. Um, just for looking for serving opportunities. So if that um, North Liberty has turned into a daycare center for um, some of the UHI, UIHC um, workers and their um, families, and then also um, international students, just ways that we can provide um, meals for them, grocery stores, um, runs, things to that effect, or also just um, little cards that you can reach out to your neighbors um, and just saying, hey, I'm here for you. Um, just let me know if you need anything. Um, so still using the social distancing, staying far away and protecting yourself in that regard, but still some action items that we can do while um, things just look very different. Um, also, some information is the Entrusted Conference that was going to be this weekend for women is going to be postponed. Um, obviously, right now, everything is kind of be um, to be determined, so we don't know currently where it's going to be or what time it is, but um, when we do find out, we'll definitely let you know. Um, I know um, for the Facebook page, um, if you go to the Women of Grace, um, Kat and Jean Keeley have been really good at updating things and just the admins of that group have, um, have done different things to stay connected. Um, so I am here um, and we decided uh, to do some sermons downtown So um, while we're away. So um, this week you'll hear Steve, next week you'll hear Jason, um, and that will have it be posted on our Facebook page. So if you haven't connected with us yet on Facebook, um, go and just check out uh, Grace Community Church downtown um, and like us there and you'll find the videos. That's where we typically will post any events that we have. So reminders of meals or um, different calendar things that we've already had. So you probably already like us, but make sure you do. Make sure everyone in your community group has liked us. Um, and we will be posting a video of, um, yeah, on Sunday nights at five um, to show you a sermon. Um, and you'll get to see some familiar faces. And last but not least, um, we are still doing our membership class. That's in a couple of weeks, so April 4th. 
um, and we're going to move it online. So you will still have the option um, to come. We just need to know how many people. Um, and mostly that's for getting the links um, with digital things. So just go on the app, search membership class, and you can register there. Register yourself, and if you're a couple, register both of you um, and just get the link there so we know how many people to expect. Again, that is April 4th. Um, and so look at your app or on Facebook for that information. Um, yeah, that is all the announcements I had for you all today. And um, yeah, just looking forward to whenever we get to all see each other, um, but just really grateful that we can be firm in our faith. Um, and just remember that um, someday we will get to be together. And there's also um, just our God is working in so many different ways right now that we don't even know. So um, praying for you guys and care about you guys and look forward to seeing you later. Good evening, Downtown Church. Uh, Pastor Steve here. It's good to meet with you all here at the Downtown Service. We're meeting in a way that we don't normally meet. I'm in Old Brick here, which is where we normally meet for service. And you all be watching this probably around the time we normally have service, which is 5 p.m. on Sundays. But the room is almost completely empty. And so uh, it's different meeting with you all in this way, but I'm really glad that we have a chance for us to have service in this way. As much as I miss seeing you all here in this room and having the chance just to be together and worship together, I'm really grateful for uh, technology and also folks like Steve Oliver who are here to make this happen, that we can have a chance to meet together as a church online. Jason and I have been praying for you all a lot as things have been developing with coronavirus and they've been changing our church rhythms. And we miss you all, but we're praying for you as well. And it's also been really encouraging to be in touch with many of you about how you're doing, how we can be praying for you, hearing about how the Lord is sustaining you, how the Lord is using many of you to reach others and care for others. And so we wanna just continue to be uh, available to you all, to pray with you all, and just to be the body, even if we can't be together in this building, and to celebrate the fact that the body of Christ is God's people and not this building. And we are just so grateful to be part of this body and also to be able to be together tonight for this sermon. So tonight uh, is our first chance to have a recorded sermon downtown. For the last two weeks, we've all been tuning into the 9.45 a.m. Uh, live stream that has happened in North Liberty, but we wanted to be able to have some sermons from downtown to get us together as a downtown church family. So this is the first of those tonight. It's just a short sermonette, not a full sermon, about 20, 25 minutes. Wanted to just touch base with you all, offer some encouraging words uh, from the scriptures. Also let you know some things that will be going on. But in the future, we'll continue to have uh, these uh, evening sermons available, uh, at least while we're only doing service online. We've had to shift all of services online only. And so that will go through Sunday, April 12th, and uh, so you can catch the downtown sermons online uh, through that time period. We're not necessarily setting precedent for after that, where we'll necessarily have videos after that, but during the season when we're all kind of cooped up at home, we wanted to have a way to be present with you all uh, through video sermons. So tonight, uh, we'll have a short sermonette. Next week, we'll jump right back into 1 Thessalonians. We're going to jump into 1 Thessalonians 4, starting in verse 9, where we'll talk about brotherly love. And so that'll be next week's sermon. The sermon that we would have had for tonight on sexual ethics, which is sexual ethics part two, we will still have that sermon, but it will not be part of a Sunday night sermon. It'll be a standalone sermon that Pastor Jason will preach and will be available online for you to catch up uh, at a different time. So uh, many of you had a chance to hear last week's sermon. It was a great sermon Pastor Brooks gave us talking about uh, hope and how we can have hope and peace amidst all the fears that we're experiencing with coronavirus. Uh, the two points that really stood out to me were the fact that uh, the gospel gives us peace amidst our fears and that the gospel then frees us to respond to others by caring for others. The gospel gives us peace amidst our fears as we realize that Jesus died to take away our sin and to give us eternal life. And I love this line. Brooks said something to the effect of, um, if we die, if things get terrible, uh, if worse comes to worse, and we die, we'll lose everything, but actually lose nothing. And that's a reason for hope, that because of what Jesus has done on the cross, if we have the hope of everlasting life, even death itself can't take away our hope. 
And when we have that kind of hope and that kind of peace, that should free us to be able to respond to others by loving those around us and caring for them. So it's a great sermon. And I know a number of people talked about how they were really, really encouraged by that sermon, really felt a lot of hope as a result of that sermon. And I did as well. But there's this interesting dynamic. Maybe you listen to a sermon like that, or you've heard sermons in the past that kind of ease your fears, or they meet you where you are, and that's good for the day. But in a day or two days or three days go by, and you start to have fear crop up again. Or whatever you were dealing with starts to crop up again. So maybe last week you heard Brooke's sermon, and it gave you some sense of peace, and you kind of got excited about serving other people. But then you turn on the news, and you get updates about how coronavirus is getting worse, how it's spreading. Like in New York, uh, it's taking off even uh, greater, and people are getting infected at higher, higher rates. Or maybe you hear about how uh, we're still dealing with medical facilities that are crunched for crucial supplies and materials. Or maybe you're hearing about people who are getting laid off and losing their jobs and their concerns about the economy. Maybe you're losing money in the stock market. And you start to have all this fear and this anxiety crop up again. For me, uh, my experience is that each day that things get a little different, it's like situations keep changing pretty uh, quickly, and each day's changes kind of bring their new fears and these new anxieties. So how do we experience a more consistent and lasting kind of peace when we keep hearing bad news? How do we not just hear a sermon that kind of is encouraging and uplifting uh, but then we seem to devolve back into fear, kind of uh, climb back down the stairs into the basement where there are all the cobwebs and it's dark and it's scary. How can we have more lasting and sustaining peace even as things are constantly changing around us? So I want to talk about what it will look like to experience a little more lasting and sustainable peace. And I think it all boils down to having robust ways of staying in the Word and being reminded of the good news. How can we have robust ways of being reminded of the good news. Rosaria Butterfield uh, recently wrote in an article talking about during this coronavirus epidemic that Christians must feast on Scripture, not CNN. Christians must feast on Scripture, not CNN. Now, this is not to demonize the news. Uh, the news that can be helpful often is helpful. It helps us to stay informed. It helps us to stay up to date about what's going on. Uh, but the news is not the good news. There's a difference between the news and the good news. If we only listen to the news and forget about the good news, then we'll likely continue to struggle with greater amounts of fear and anxiety. The news tells us what the death toll is, but the good news tells us that Jesus has conquered death itself. The news shows us how people are in deep sorrow, and this is tragic. We should be aware of what people are suffering from. But the good news tells us that one day God will wipe away every tear from every eye. The news shows us that things are uncertain, and we're not sure what's going to happen in the future. But the good news tells us that God continues to be in control of his world, and God can bring good even out of difficult and tragic circumstances. The, the news shows us people suffering in isolation and alone, but the good news promises us that Jesus will never leave us or forsake us, and that the very Spirit of God dwells within his people. He's with you. He's with you. The news tells that the stock market is tanking, but the good news promises that treasure in heaven will not be destroyed. So there's lots of good news in the Word of God, and we want to immerse ourselves in that good news. So while we keep up with the news and stay informed about what's going on in the world, to be aware of what's happening and to be equipped to respond to that, we also want to immerse ourselves in the good news where we have hope, where we have joy, and where we have a sense of God easing our fears and leading us into a trust in Him, knowing that He's working all things for the good of His people. So here's some ways that we can stay rooted in the good news. A lot of this isn't new. Just want to remind you of things that we should be about. If you're in a season where you're uh, in the word in these ways and reminding yourself of the good news, keep at it and keep at it with other people. But just want to remind you of these things. And if you're not doing these things, invite you to really jump into them. So first of all, uh, you can stay tuned in here to sermons at church. We'll continue to have sermons, uh, both North Liberty and downtown. We want to encourage you to stay in, uh, in touch with us and tune into those sermons uh, so that we can preach the word. We'll be jumping right back into 1 Thessalonians next week, preaching the word and staying in the word in that way. So tune in for those. Community group is a great way 
to remind one another of the good news, to be in group where we are not only talking about how we're doing, learning about how we can care for one another, but also then being able to remind one another of the good news and the hope we have in Christ Jesus. I'm really encouraged to hear about what community groups are already doing to be in touch with each other and to continue to meet, even if we can't meet in person, in homes, and people are encouraging one another with the good news and want to encourage you to do that. If you are part of the downtown church but are not in a community group yet, we'd love to invite you to even explore doing that now. I know it's an odd season to do that, but uh, it would be a great time to really get plugged in with other believers who can encourage you in the good news. You can encourage them. And if you'd like to do that, please email us at downtown at graceb3.org. And Jason and I would be glad to get you in touch with some community groups and get you plugged in where you can be reminded of the good news and not be alone uh, during the season. Bible reading is another great way to just stay Uh, rooted in the Word and being reminded of what the good news is. Some of you are doing that maybe as a family, as you're gathering around a table and reminding one another of the good news, being in the Word together. Uh, Mindy started something up at home with our family, which has been great. Uh, We were given this uh, small devotional book, which has some scriptures that are kind of geared towards uh, children and some lessons in them. And we've been uh, having breakfast in the morning. And once we kind of conclude breakfast, we uh, break out that devotional and kind of have a little time together. And it's a great time to be in the Word and talk with our kids about what's in the Word and pray together as a family. Some of you are doing Bible reading plans with friends, and that's a great way to not only be in the Word, but be in the Word together. And you can do that uh, with your friends, as many of you are. And as individuals, just staying in the Word, being immersed in the Word, memorizing Scripture, going through a reading plan, or just reading in any way that is helpful for you. Some of you, it's best to just listen to the scriptures as you can listen to an audio Bible online, but be in the word. Prayer is a great way also to be reminded of the good news. Now, prayer is not primarily about uh, reminding ourselves of the good news, but if we pray according to the good news, if we remember as we are praying, what is the good news and how should that shape my prayers, it does actually have a way of reminding us of the good news. So like if I'm praying for peace, what is the Bible, what is the good news in the scriptures about how God brings peace? Well, one way God brings peace is to be reminded that whatever we face in this life is temporary, that God will give us eternal joy because of what Christ has done on the cross. So if we remember that good news, it shapes our prayers. God, give me peace today by helping me to remember the eternal picture and the eternal scope of all that you've accomplished through Jesus. So prayer, even when we pray biblical prayers and pray according to the word, it reminds us of the good news. And then finally, there are times of reflection that can be really, really helpful times of reflecting on the good news that are extremely helpful. Sometimes in our church cultures, uh, in different contexts, kind of have this temptation to feel like every time we uh, approach the scriptures, we have to be learning something new. And that if you open your Bible and read it one day, and you don't necessarily learn something new, it's, it's been a failure. But uh, the Bible is not set up to always teach us something new. Sometimes the Bible is there to remind us of truths that we already know from the Bible. So it's not always about learning something new. The Bible is like this inexhaustible, amazing text where God is revealing himself to humans. It's a rich, rich text, and we can never really exhaust the depths of its treasures for us. So we're always going to be learning something new, but that doesn't mean that every time we open its pages, we learn something new. For me, Sometimes when I grow, that happens not because I've learned something new, but because I've taken a moment to reflect on what I know the Bible to already have said. What I know the Bible has already said to be true, if I take some time to reflect on that and really allow that thought and that truth to soak in and to seep in, it can really impact how I look at my day, how I look at the world, how I approach situations, how I see God at work. An ounce of reflection for me sometimes, thoughtful reflection, just kind of meditating on what I know to be true from the scriptures, meditating on that can go a lot further than kind of feverishly trying to pull out of the Bible something new if it's not naturally presenting something new to me in the day. So these are just some ways to be immersed in the good news. There are other ways you can do this. Many of you are already doing that. I encourage you to do those and and others. Whatever helps you to stay immersed in the good news, uh, the good news of who God is and what he's done 
that he spells out in the scriptures. I encourage you to do that. I'm not suggesting that you do all of these. I know we're kind of under quarantine, so to speak, and maybe some of us have extra spare time. Uh, I'm not encouraging you to have to do all of these as some kind of laborious uh, checklist uh, or legalistic checklist. Uh, rather, I'm saying find some ways, several ways of being in the good news, in the word, reminding yourself of the good news so that God can remind you of the hope that he's made available through Jesus. So as we stay rooted in the good news, I do want to also remind us that we should be actively serving other people. So as God continues to give us peace, calms our fears, eases our anxieties as we remember the hope that we have because of what Jesus has done, uh, also want to be reminded to then step out and to care and serve others. Uh, may God help us to do that well. You know, in times past when uh, tragedies and pandemics hit the world, uh, the church has often responded well. And not always, but often the church has responded well. I was just listening to a podcast the other day where I was reminded that during the, the third or fourth century, there was this plague that hit the Roman Empire, and Christians responded really well and were caring for the sick during that plague. I was also reminded in that podcast, this historian from the University of Oregon was saying, it's Christians largely who started the hospitals uh, early on because Christians were the ones who were seeing the needs of people around them and responding with compassion. It was Christians who were driven by compassion to care for those around them who were sick. And this is largely how hospitals got up and running. And may God help us to have compassion on those around us when we see them in need or see them in crisis. So last week, Brooke shared with us uh, three different ways that we can help serve people. If you don't have ways of knowing how to do that right now, and you're not responding yet, these are three ways, very practical, that you could serve others. Uh, these are uh, available at graceb3.org slash action. You can go there and see all these there and actually uh, click on different options for signing up and registering for these. So the first is if you wanna just care for your neighbors, we have a little postcard that you can download and print off and you can uh, drop it off at your neighbor's house, a way to say if you have need for anything, groceries, if you need anything, let, let me know and I'd be glad to help you. So you can go online at that website, at that link, and uh, you could be able to download that postcard to be able to serve your neighbors. International students are in need right now in the area. So if you'd like to help international students, uh, you can go to that uh, link as well and be able to uh, register for that and we'll get you connected with international students. And healthcare workers right now, healthcare workers are really, really taxed. Uh, they're doing great work, but they're also really taxed. A number of them need childcare as uh, different childcare options are starting to shut down. And so at Grace North Liberty, they're going to be able to make some childcare available to healthcare workers, but we need volunteers to come in in the evening and to kind of sanitize and disinfect and scrub down the rooms. So if you'd like to volunteer and help with that, you can uh, register for that on the website as well. For those who are maybe looking for other insights, uh, Tiffany Bourbon, who attends downtown as part of the downtown church, has been a great uh, member of this church, uh, actually has a podcast. Uh, she doesn't know I'm going to mention this, but she has a podcast with her brother where she talked about how the church can help, and I'd encourage you to check that out uh, and get some uh, further suggestions there. Today, as we close, we're going to do something a little different. It's the last Sunday of the month, which means it's Communion Sunday. We usually do communion together as a church on the last Sunday of the month. And we're going to take some time to do communion together. Um, so before we go any further, I encourage you to just pause the video right now and uh, grab whatever you have on hand that could be communion-like. Uh, something to drink, uh, something to munch on <laughs> that looks kind of like communion, and we're going to do communion together. So just go ahead and pause, grab whatever elements you have, come back, and we'll uh, continue on in communion together. In 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 through 26, Paul says this, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So Paul is laying out here uh, commands for communion, how to participate in communion together. 
And Christians are used to doing communion. We've been doing it for over 2,000 years. And sometimes you might stop and think, why do we do communion? Now, the answer that my mom would give me when I asked any kind of a why question, why do we do this? She would always say, because I said so. I'm the parent, you're the child. This is why we're doing this, because I said so. And some people might think, well, it's because Jesus told us uh, to uh, do communion. He told us to drink the bread, drink the cup, and to remember his death until he comes again. But there's a reason Jesus wants to engage in communion on a regular basis. It's because communion reinforces the two greatest moments in the story of what God is doing in his world. Communion forces us to remember Jesus' death, to drink the bread, or drink the cup, and to eat the bread as we remember Jesus' death on the cross. But we do that looking forward to when he returns. As Paul says here, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So we're proclaiming his death, remembering his death, while also looking forward to the event when he comes back. These are the two greatest moments in the history of God's work to redeem sinners and to redeem the world. These are the two greatest moments of good news that make up the good news. At Jesus' death, it's such good news because it's there that we experience forgiveness of sin. If in the midst of all the pandemic, you also have the weight of your own sin, the sins of this week, the sins of today, that are burdening you and weighing you down, your shame and your guilt, Remembering Jesus' death is such good news because we remember because he died on the cross, there is forgiveness for our sins. And we can take deep joy in that, that he washes us, cleanses us of all of that sin. And that's good news. But there's also the good news that when Jesus died on the cross, he entered into this world of pain and suffering. So if you're suffering today, you know, dealing with fear and anxiety, seeing the pain of this broken world, It's broken in so many ways, not just health, but now there are questions about economy. There are questions about what's going to happen to the elderly, those who are maybe already dealing with underlying issues, and those who are uh, maybe more susceptible to this, and we start to fear about, uh, be concerned about them, and we see this world being so broken. It's so evident that the world is broken. When we look at the cross, we remember that we serve a God who has entered into this broken world. And we, as, as we experience this brokenness, we can remember he too has experienced brokenness. So we remember he not only washes us of our sin, cleanses us from that, but he is also a fellow sufferer and knows what it means to be living under the weight and pain of a broken world. He's with us. And we can remember that today as we remember his death, and that's good news. But we also celebrate and look forward to his return that this Jesus who died is also the Jesus who rose from the dead and will one day return as the conquering and true king who will set up his eternal kingdom forever. When he comes back, he will raise us to new everlasting life. I love that phrase that people have often used in church history, that we will be raised to life incorruptible incorruptible. It's life that can't be tainted by sin. It's life that can't be tainted by the brokenness of a fallen world. Perfect life, eternal and everlasting life with God and with other saints who've experienced his forgiveness. And new life and a new creation. No more wars, no more sickness, no more pain, no more conflict, no more turmoil. So today we remember Jesus' death, the good news of his death, where he washes us of our sins where he knows what it is to be a sufferer and to experience this fallen and broken world, but he's also promising the hope of his return, where we'll experience resurrection life forever and eternity with him and with others, and also experience his new creation, the new heavens and the new earth, where we'll live face to face with him. So today, let's take the bread and let's take the cup together as a family. God, we just want to thank you for all the good news that you've given us. We want to thank you so much that you've made us, Lord, you know us. Our very lives are the result of your creative and good work. We want to thank you for all the ways that life is good, and all of that goodness points to your wisdom, your love, your power. But Lord, we also want to thank you that you are continually at work in a broken and a fallen world. Right now, as we continue to experience all kinds of different 
turmoil, our world is being uh, just overturned and upset in terms of its normal functioning, the way it normally works, and it's raising lots of fears and anxieties, we want to thank you, Lord God, that nothing can steal away the hope of eternal life that we have in Christ Jesus. And it's something you've made available to us out of rich love for us and out of rich grace for us. Remind us of that today. Lord, I pray that you would also remind us that you are with us in this uh, time, that you continue to be with your church and with your people. May we be comforted by that. May we be also be comforted by the fact that you will return again and restore and renew all things. And Lord, as you give your people hope, as you give us peace, as you give us that hope, help us not just to consume that and just to enjoy that for ourselves. But Lord, we pray that you would then quicken us and make us ready, Lord God, to serve those around us. May your kingdom come among us, not only as you give us peace, but may we become instruments through whom your kingdom comes to other people as we care for them, as we serve them, as we see their needs and find ways to be present for them, comfort them, and ultimately, Lord God, help us to be prepared and ready to share the gospel with those who don't know you. And Lord, we pray that they would know you. We pray for many people right now in the Iowa City area who are around us who don't know you. Lord, make us instruments, Lord God, not only to care for their needs, but to share the gospel with them. And may many people, Lord God, place their faith in you. May they find you to be a good God. May they find their hope, their joy, their, uh, their life in you, Lord God. And Lord, we pray that uh, in all of this, not only would we experience your goodness, but others would experience it. And we pray that you would be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us in church, and we'll see you all next week.